Around 8,000 years ago, the indigenous peoples of Kentucky started becoming more sedentary hunter-gatherers, leaving behind evidence of more diverse material culture as they began using a wider array of resources. Some locations were intensely utilized for long intervals year after year, and were even used as special cemeteries as well as space for the living. This time is known as the Middle Archaic Period, and it is at these sites among diversified tool assemblages that archaeologists find side notch projectile point styles unique to this period. In this video, I flip a replica of one of these points, a Godar projectile point, and explore the archaeology of the Middle Archaic Period in Kentucky. To begin my Godar point replica, I select a large flake of a Newman shirt and begin removing flakes that will make the edges in both faces set up for more thorough flake removals. Newman shirt occurs throughout eastern Kentucky, and I collected this piece myself. Newman shirt occurs as nodules and as bedded materials in the Haney and Paoli limestone members of the Newman limestone formation. Middle Archaic people would have used a wide variety of shirts, including Newman but also St. Genevieve shirt, Boyle shirt, Fort Payne shirt, St. Louis shirt, and many more types. Archaeologists define the Middle Archaic period from 8,000 to 5,000 years ago, based on shifts in technology, subsistence, and residential practices. During this time, the climate would have been drier and grass prairies were common while forests shrank in size. Native Kentuckians began utilizing a broader range of resources, indicated by the increase in types of tools like groundstone tools for processing nuts and seeds. Some sites, particularly in central Kentucky along the Green River, show increased evidence for sedentary behavior, including extensive middens, which are concentrated areas of disposed artifacts, and special cemetery areas. Many of the middens at these Green River sites are made up of shellfish remains, which were a food source people weren't utilizing much before the Middle Archaic period. People were occupying sites during the Middle Archaic for long stretches of the year, and were using these locations repeatedly. However, they were still hunter-gatherers and moved their residents at least a few times a year. In the eastern part of the state, people were still quite mobile as they had been during the Early Archaic period. Overall, there is a trend of Middle Archaic people having lived less in the uplands and more in wetland and riverine environments. Side notch projectile points are technology that was used by Middle Archaic people, and includes styles such as Godar, Osceola, Big Sandy, Radets, and more. In general, these points have narrow triangular blades with straight or slightly excavate edges, and open side notches. The bases of these points were often straight, but sometimes incurvate. Hafted bifaces which served as projectile points and knife blades were not the only tools we find at Middle Archaic sites. Other flat tools include flake tools, drills, generic bifaces, and many more types. It also isn't uncommon to find goder points which had been broken or worn out reworked into end scrapers, which can be used for processing hides. Middle Archaic people also use ground stone tool technology. Ground stone tools were made through pecking and grinding, rather than by flint napping, and could make use of tough, durable stones which were unsuitable for flint napping. Pitted ground stone tools are used as anvils for cracking nuts, and they used mortars and pestles for grinding nuts and seeds into a flour. They also made ground stone woodworking tools called grooved axes. These have a groove which is made either three quarters or all the way around the circumference of the axe head where a handle would have been fixed in place. These tools took far longer to make than their church counterparts, but would have lasted much longer, likely for years. Bone objects are also found at Middle Archaic period sites when preservation conditions allowed for it. Some of these include bone awls, atlatl hooks and handles, bone beads, and bone fish hooks. As the biface becomes thinner, the flakes I remove are smaller and require more precision. Where I'm striking the edge of the biface is called a platform, and I'm preparing the platforms for flake removals with both percussion and pressure flakes. Once the platform is the correct shape and angle, I use a coarse stone to braid the edge dull, which will allow for a successful flake removal. 
Middle Archaic people hunted and gathered a broader range of foods than people in prior time periods. Animals would have been hunted using atlatls or dart throwers, tipped with flint projectile points like godar points. Faunal and botanical data from this period shows that diets consisted of largely freshwater shellfish, white-tailed deer, small mammals, fish, turtles, and hickory nuts, and were sometimes supplemented with turkey, seeds, and squashes. The frequency of groundstone tools in middle archaic assemblages indicates that hickory nuts were often processed in bulk, probably for large social gatherings or for winter food storage. It is possible that these middle archaic Kentuckians were managing these tree nut stands to encourage greater harvests year after year. Now with the biface nearly the right size and thickness, I used both percussion flaking to contour it in combination with pressure flaking. I used an antler pressure flaker to build up force on the edge and pop off a flake. While these pressure flakes are small, they are also very precise and give me lots of control. Green River archaic sites are well known for containing special burials. These individuals all tend to be older people, suggesting they were specially selected for burial here rather than at other locations. Burials dating to well before the Middle Archaic are known, but formal cemeteries are a new cultural trend at this time. People were buried at these Green River sites from the Middle to Late Archaic periods, and the Jackson Bluff and Baker sites are two specifically Middle Archaic sites known for their cemeteries. Not only were they burying people here, but also dogs. The people were buried in single rows within the midden, and at both sites the dogs were placed in a semicircular pattern around and downslope of the human burials. This burial pattern appears to be part of a cultural trend which changed with burials during the late archaic period. Signs of interpersonal violence are present on some of these bodies, including missing limbs, cut marks, and more. Occasionally, they were also buried with special funerary objects, sometimes out of exotic goods like seashells and copper. Overall, the data from these burials tells archaeologists that Middle Archaic people in Kentucky had a mostly egalitarian social organization, and that their status in life was largely determined by their personal accomplishments. With the biface for my Godar replica nearly complete, it is time to notch it and make it into an actual Godar point. Notches allow for a point to be hatched to a shaft, foreshaft, or handle for use as a honey implement or a tool. I begin the notches with a bison rib, removing small flakes in the same place along the side edges again and again. I then switch to using a flat section of antler as an indirect precursor to remove notch flakes. This technique is almost as precise as the pressure flaking, but removes a larger flake. The notches go straight into the sides and are fairly open, just like the Godar points I'm trying to replicate. And with the notches complete, a few final passes of the pressure flaker are used to shape and sharpen the projectile point. The Middle Archaic period was a time of significant changes in the mobility and diet for indigenous Kentuckians. These changes are reflected in their toolkits, not only in the styles of projectile points, but also new forms of tools, like the introduction of groundstone technology and extensive use of bone and antler. As people began to settle some places semi-permanently, they buried some of their dead in special cemeteries to mark a place as belonging to their own people. While still practicing a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, Middle Archaic peoples were becoming more sedentary and finding new ways to thrive in the Kentucky landscape. 